The theme for this year's season of creation is Jubilee for the Earth. During this season, let us celebrate the goodness and beauty of creation. Thank God for His love and mercy and pray that we may care for our common home and give our earth rest from greed and destruction so that it can continue to sustain and govern the earth community. Eleanor Yanes, who will lead the reflection today, is a religious sister of the ICM. Irmas Missionarias do Immaculado Coracao de Maria. She worked in Brazil for about 20 years. A visual artist, her works graced covers of publication of religious women in Brazil. She will lead us to reflect through her artworks on the movement of wisdom God in creation and Jesus Christ who can give us hope and light in our present situation. Her reflection today is the third and last of her sharing. A blessed season of creation again. My last presentation to share my reflections and my paintings. And I would like to repeat the underlying theme of all these three presentations. The movement of divine wisdom in creation and humanity. Ang paggalaw ng banal na karunungan sa kalikasan at sa sangkatauhan. And we want to remember again the reason why we are here, why we are sharing and reflecting. During this season of creation, we enter a time of restoration and hope, a jubilee for our earth that requires radically new ways of living with creation. My theme for this last presentation is divine wisdom in the groaning of creation and of humanity. Divine wisdom in the groaning of creation and of humanity. I will be sharing, now I am sharing, this painting. And as you will see, the context is not the context of the Philippines. As I have been in Brazil for 24 years, the context of this painting is the Amazon forest. Maybe just to remember how I painted this, how I was challenged to create this image. It was an invitation for the, from the Conference of the Religious of Brazil when they needed an image for their uh, symposium on the challenges that the Amazon forest is posing the challenges that are being posed to the religious of Brazil. They needed an image for the symposium. The title of the, the symposium was The Word of God in the Amazon Forest. So I will be sharing the significance of this painting. This was used for a symposium reflecting on the challenges that the Amazon forest is posing to the religious of Brazil. I say is because until now it is a big challenge for the religious of Brazil. I would like to use the reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. We know that the whole creation suffers the pangs of birth, not creation alone, but even ourselves. Although the Spirit was given to us as a foretaste of what we are to receive, we groan in our innermost being, eagerly awaiting the day when God will give us full rights and rescue our bodies as well. When I was drawing, painting this image, this was the reading that was in my mind. And as I look at this painting now, this reading continues to be alive in this painting. When I drew and painted this, I imagined the wounded Amazon forest as a pieta, a mother holding her suffering, agonizing son. We look at this image and we see two bodies 
The image is full of contrast, symbolized by two bodies. The degraded Amazon forest is symbolized by an agonizing suffering body. You see that body connected to the different elements of the Amazon forest, to the different movements in the Amazon forest. The other body is the remaining healthy, alive part of the forest, which is symbolized by a woman she carries on her lap the agonizing body. Maybe this moment, allow the image to touch your heart. This is a strong image and it needs a little, some seconds to look at it and some seconds to allow our hearts to grieve before the signs of suffering and death in the Amazon forest. There is a remaining part of the body of the forest that is still green, with clean rivers, with strong, beautiful trees, with a biodiversity still alive. And for me, when I was painting, drawing, drawing and painting this, in my imagination, this remaining part of the body of the forest that is still alive is that part that continues to resist the various factors that are hurting and killing the forest. And that part continues to carry on her lap the agonizing part of the forest. We look at the body. The body is still connected. As we see the body, how connected it is to that agoni agonizing part of the forest. But we see also the hand of that agonizing part still connected to that part of the forest that is still alive. In spite of the pain, he continues to hold on to life. He continues to allow himself to be touched by life. When we look at this drawing, this painting, we see signs of hope and life. In spite of the dying part of the Amazon forest, we see signs of hope and life. There is new growth in spite of the suffering, pain, and death. There is growth. Do you see the growing plants, that small growing plant in the midst of this suffering and pain? We look again at this painting and we see the light of divine wisdom. We see the light of God, the light flowing, touching the contrasting images. See the light flowing, permeating into the life and suffering of the forest. I still believe that in this suffering and death, God's light continues to flow. The light of divine wisdom continues to flow continues to touch the fiber, the recesses of this forest. Let us look once again to this image. And maybe as we look at this image, we also remember the situation, the state of the forest of the Philippines. We remember the state of the mountains all over the Philippines. Maybe for the reflection, to connect to my, to our reality. Yeah, the Amazon forest being connected to the situation of the rainforests and mountains of the Philippines. What is triggered within me as I see this image? Have I listened to the groaning of creation and to my own groaning? Have I listened to the groaning of creation here in the Philippines? and all over the world. Am I one in that groaning? I would like to, again, because this will be my last presentation and sharing, maybe the last but not the least, I would like to remember again the challenge of contemplation. To look closely and lovingly at what is real. To look closely and lovingly to the natural world 
to the beautiful creation God has given us. And maybe, again, to be reminded of our commitment as artists, poets, and writers, and musicians. The commitment to paying attention, to seeing deeply into things, especially the attention to the natural world in its beauty and brokenness. To open oneself to seeing in this way is to risk being drawn into an utterly involving engagement with all, with all that one beholds and contemplates. Whatever we behold, whatever we contemplate, we are responsible. We are responsible for what we behold and what we contemplate. Could a commitment to enter into the life of the natural world and to practice this kind of paying attention and reciprocity contribute to healing and restoration? Again, that question. My relationship with the natural world, with humanity, how is it? How is it contributing to healing and restoration? And again, I would like to repeat what Douglas Christie said, that our ecological commitments, if they are to reach mature and sustainable expression, need to be grounded in a sense of deep reciprocity, in a sense of deep relationship with the natural world. And that this sense of reciprocity and relationship must be cultivated, must be nourished over time in a process of deepening awareness and growing ethical maturity. There is hope. We know that there is hope. As we see that in my drawing and painting, the light of wisdom God continues to touch us, to touch the recesses of this suffering and pain. And I would like to quote Richard Rohr. This is one of her most recent reflections. As brokenhearted as God must be over what we have done to the gift of creation, God still has a dream. God dreams that humans seek spiritual rather than a material progress. God's dream and visions a just world at peace because gratitude has dissolved anxiety and generosity has eclipsed greed. God dreams of a time when love and mutual respect will bind humanity together and the profound beauty of creation will be treasured. Let us embrace God's dream as our own. Suddenly, the horizon of our hope comes nearer as we live into God's dream. We will rediscover, we will rediscover who we truly are, and all of creation will be singing, Richard Rohr. And again, my first painting, the first one of the first paintings I presented, that says, God saying, wisdom God saying, here I make all things new. And we believe the divine wisdom renews all things. She sees everything. She pervades and permeates all things. She penetrates all spirits. She enlightens the recesses of our pain and suffering. There is hope and we pray. Jesus Christ, you are divine wisdom in our midst. Give us the grace to be attentive to the groaning of the whole creation and humanity, to the groaning within us. Wisdom, God, empty us to allow your light to flow into the recesses of our being. We believe you are renewing the face of creation and humanity. Amen. Here in my references, I would like to add again, I forgot to write, it's yeah, Richard Rohr's quotation. That's from Richard Rohr. Brothers and sisters, again, a blessed season of creation. And thank you for this opportunity to be able to share my reflections and my paintings and drawings. Thank you. All-powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. 
you embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love, that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace, that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. Creative Spirit, enlighten our hearts and remain with your world. May the Spirit of Christ, shining in the heavenly skies, radiate in you. May the presence of the Spirit, flowing in the air and in the rivers, bring you peace. And may God's blessing liberate you from all that is destructive and exploitative in you and make you whole and holy so you can become channels of God's liberating love for all life on earth. Amen.